Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Arash Adder, and in continuation of our Adobe Anime tutorials, in this video I'm going to teach you about the Assets panel and how to use the ready-made rigs. The Assets panel gives us access to characters, objects, rigs, and ready-made scenes for animation. To access the Assets, click on the Assets panel. If you don't see the Assets panel here, you can activate or deactivate it from the window menu. The Assets panel has two modes. Custom, which contains the assets we add to the software ourselves to use later. Default, which contains the assets that the software has already prepared for us to use. We'll first take a look at the default section. The default section is divided into three parts, Animate, Static, and Sound Clips. If I open the Animate section, you can see that it includes two parts. I'll expand this, set it to All, and here as well I'll set it to All for now. In this mode, you can see that the Animate section includes characters or objects that are animated. If I hover the mouse over them, you can see their movement. These objects are more than just a single frame, they include animations. Now I can filter it to show only props. You'll see that only accessories are displayed. For example, if I want to use this globe, I can left-click and drag it into my scene. It might take a little while to download, but once it's ready, it will appear in my scene. From the Properties panel, I'll change the color of the stage a little so you can see the scene more clearly. This way, you can see the movement of the globe. Now, I'll select it and press the Delete key to remove the globe. Let's go back to the Assets panel. Here, there are a lot of animated objects you can use. If you don't have these objects, just click on the Download Assets button at the bottom of the software, and it will download the assets and place them here. Now, from here I can select the Background option. These are animated backgrounds in the Assets panel. We can drag them into the scene. If I press Ctrl plus Enter, you'll see that the background animates. Now I'll click on it and press delete to remove it. So, these were animated backgrounds. I'll switch it back to all. Using these options, we can choose to show only objects or only rigs. If you remember, in the previous lessons I showed you how to rig and animate your own characters. Here, you can also see the rigs you've already created. Okay, I'll set this option to all, then close the animated section. With this option, you can also change the display style of the assets. Now, I'll close the animated section and open the static section. In the static section, everything is still and has no motion. Each object has only one frame. For example, let's pick one of these characters. I'll drag it into the scene, and immediately the character appears. Now I can hold Shift and use the free transform tool to resize it and place it here. Or I can choose another character, just hold left click, drag, and drop it into the scene. You can see that if I move the timeline slider forward, there's no animation, it's just an image without movement. So I'll select this one and press delete. Besides the characters option, which shows different characters, we can also click on props to see the props in this section. We can also select backgrounds here. You'll see a variety of backgrounds. For example, I can select this one, hold left click, and drop it into the scene. After a short wait, the background is added. Now I can resize it and place it in the scene. I can also select these three layers and move them lower so the character is visible. Let's enlarge the background a bit so it fits the stage. Now it looks fine. So, as you saw, we easily added a ready-made background. Remember, if we want the background to appear across all frames, we need to create frames for it. For example, I'll drag and drop it into this frame, then choose Insert Frame, so the background appears in every frame. Now, for example, instead of just background, we can select All, which includes characters, objects, and backgrounds together. From here again, we can also filter it to show only objects. OK, I'll set it back to All and close this section. In the Sound Clip section, there are short sound effects. For example, if I hold left click here, drag it into the scene, and drop it, a sound is added. 
If I press play, you'll hear the sound. In the same way, you can download and use different sounds in your projects. Now, I'll select the sound layer and press delete. I'll also delete this other layer since I don't need it. At the bottom, there's a trash bin icon, you can delete any assets you don't want by dropping them there. Now, to create our own asset, I'll use the shape tool. I'll choose the circle shape. Remember, you can turn any picture or shape into an asset. I'll draw a circle here and adjust it a little to make it different. Now, to convert it into an asset, just select it, press F8, and turn it into a symbol. I'll give it a name, for example, A1, and click OK. Now if I go back to the library, you can see A1, the shape I just converted into a symbol, is there. It's very easy to right-click on it and choose either Export Asset or Save as Asset. The difference is that Export saves the file on your computer. So I'll click that, then choose Export. I can rename the asset if I want, and finally click Save. Now it's saved to my desktop. If I go back to the Assets panel and open the Custom section, you'll see that the shape I saved isn't here yet. But there's a plus icon at the bottom. If I click on it, I can import the asset I saved, for example, the A1 file. I'll click Open, and now it's imported. You can see it here in the Static section. I can drag it into the scene and use it. I can also select it and press delete. Or, back in the library, I can right click again and this time choose save as asset. In this window, I can rename the asset, and when I click save, it goes directly into the assets panel. Ok friends, I'll delete this layer and go back to the default section. Now, you may ask, how can we animate characters that are static? Well, right now I already have one of these characters in the scene. At the top, I'll open the animate section and choose character. You can also select the rig option to only show rigs. Since our character is shown from the side view, we can choose this walking bone rig for side view. If the character was from the front view, I would choose the front view skeleton instead. Now, I'll drag this rig into the scene. In the previous lesson, I showed you how to quickly set up bone rigging. If I click on the character, you'll see it as one single layer. But if I double click, I can select each part separately. So, I'll select the middle bone, which is for the pelvis, and click on the pelvis of the character. You'll see it turns green, which means it's correctly attached. If you link it by mistake, just hover the mouse here and click the minus icon to remove the link. For the upper body, it's the same, select the bone and click on the torso. For the head, select the bone and click on the head. For the arms, select each bone and link it to the correct arm layer. And for the legs, the same process. Now you can see all the bones are linked. If we want to use the ready-made walking animation, we can check the motion box here and click apply. This way, the walking skeleton is applied instantly. Now, if I close this panel and press play, you'll see the walking animation is created. If loop is enabled, the walking cycle repeats continuously. If you don't need this animation, you can simply select all the keyframes except the first one and choose Remove Frames. Then, using the Selection tool, you can build your own custom animation. For example, at frame 30, I can create a keyframe and apply changes to animate it however I want. Alright friends, this tutorial has come to an end.
I hope you enjoyed it. In this lesson, you learned how to use the assets panel and ready-made characters. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end of the video. Until the next one, goodbye for now.